I'm trans, female to male, and six years ago I had bottom surgery. It was really hard on my body, and I had a lot of complications, even prior to the story that I'm going to tell you. To this date, I've had 75 surgeries for this. At the time, I was 22. I met a boy online a year after my surgeries. I was in a pretty good spot with complications. We lived in different states, and he was also transitioning from female to male. After a month of being official, he said he was about to be homeless, so I asked him to move here. I was living with a friend and she gave us about a month to find our own place, which was fine. He began causing tension and issues between her and I to the point that we ended up homeless, me, him, and my service dog. He went home to get money from family, and my dog and I in the middle of winter slept in a parking lot in an SUV. Eventually, we ended up in an apartment with a local person in the community. My ex and I ended up splitting up a week after signing the lease, but luckily had separate rooms. My ex had made friends with someone named Elle, and eventually I got close to Elle as well. And as time went on, Elle was really helpful on trying to keep tensions away as they grew between my ex and I. One day we got into a huge fight, and I'm not ashamed to admit that I was the one who started it by yelling at him and then tossing something of his into his room on his floor. He got in my face trying to trigger my PTSD, knowing I would act out. I went to push him and he fell back on his bed. At this point in time, I was still walking with a cane due to severe complications, so I wasn't strong. Also, he was a black belt who went to the gym two plus times a day. He pulled back and then intentionally kicked me between the legs, and when I fell forward in pain, bit into my collarbone which I didn't notice until the adrenaline came down. He then went across the hall into my room and pushed my air conditioner out of my window to leave the house, claiming I was stopping him. I called Elle crying and hyperventilating, trying to tell them what happened. They came over and my ex was sitting on the steps of our porch. They then said, You bit him? And my ex then smiled and said, I sure did. Elle took me to the hospital where a social worker and two police officers sat and took my statement. The female officer told me that because I had legally changed my gender marker from female to male and he hadn't, I was the aggressor, and that if I pressed charges, I would be the one with aggravated assault. So I did it. I had four surgeries at the time to correct the damage he caused. Months had passed, and a second occurrence happened. This time I called the police to the house. They made him leave. My friend happened to be over, and she had sat while the police escorted him out and told me that I needed to get a restraining order and that the police officer before lied to me. More than likely due to transphobia since she kept saying my bottom surgery and gender marker was why I was in the wrong because he was still considered a woman. After a whole lot of tension and drama, we all moved out. And one day I was on a post about some abuse happening between a couple of influencers in our little community. And my ex's friend's wife proudly commented that I shouldn't say shit because my ex beat the shit out of me. As well as other demeaning things, basically blaming me for being abused. To this day, I'm in a happy, healthy relationship. And I'm nowhere near done fixing the physical damage that he caused my urethra and other bottom parts in that area including my bladder tearing open and apart from the urethra. It's four years later, and I'm now on disability and constantly suffering from paranoia and crippling anxiety and depression, as well as borderline personality disorder, derealization and depersonalization disorder, and PTSD. I am so thankful to be able to send this story out there, because I recently began my trauma work for it, and it's been making my life very difficult. Domestic violence is never okay, and if officials aren't taking you seriously, please seek out other officials. Had I done that, a second occurrence wouldn't have happened. Stay safe. Trigger Warning for Domestic Violence and Abuse His name will be changed for my safety, so just keep in mind while reading. I was just a sophomore in high school, and I fell hard for a quiet new kid, and I thought he was my forever. Crazy how I actually would later marry him just one week after graduation. 
high school sweethearts. Looking back now, I can see how many red flags I noticed but ignored just because I was young, rushing to be grown. The night before my wedding day, I was going over last minute wedding details with my mom, who's easily one of the most caring and selfless people that I know. So bless my sweet mama's heart when I asked her if she'd be mad if I decided that I didn't want to go through with the wedding. The wedding was the next day, by the way. But me being me, mom thought I was just messing with her. I couldn't tell her the truth of what was going on now, so I just took a deep breath and forced a believable chuckle. She genuinely thought I was just pulling another one of my jokes. I went on to finally tell her the truth almost a year after I escaped him and she still feels bad not taking it seriously. No one knew what was going on behind closed doors, but it makes sense. I was honestly his biggest PR team. Only two hours passed since saying I do's, and he was throwing me out of the truck in my parents' driveway, cussing and yelling that he wanted a divorce, then recklessly driving off. Yeah, so much for all that honeymoon phase on our actual honeymoon. I ran inside and my dad came out of the bedroom and he couldn't understand a word I'm saying because he's basically trying to ask me what was happening and I said it as clearly as I could while uncontrollably sobbing. He left me. How could he? On our honeymoon. My dad was pissed but then relaxed and tried to rationalize the situation. Like maybe he forgot something, pulling a bad joke or something like that. Then we see his truck flying in our driveway, and my dad smiles and says, See? He's right there. I wipe my tears and walk out of the door, and then tell them yes, it was a prank. But on the inside, I was screaming. I was so embarrassed for myself because now I look crazy. But if I wanted to save this relationship, they could never know the truth. Months go by and he starts being sweeter ever since we got to be long distance because he was in the military and training, but soon I would be packing up my life and moving to Texas with him. I could tell my parents were starting to see the cracks that I'd worked so hard to glue together. My mom even picked up my phone on the table, mistaking it for hers, and she saw this huge message from my ex and just started crying, begging me to stay because he wasn't a good person. But I assured her that this was way out of character for him and that he was just lonely. I obviously lied. I knew she didn't believe me, but she also knew that I was stubborn and I was going to do whatever I wanted regardless of her concerns. After just a few weeks in Texas, I knew that my life was in danger. It was Thanksgiving Day and my family just called to check up on us and just tell us Happy Thanksgiving. And the moment I hung up... The man I thought was my soulmate started cussing me out, saying that I needed to stop talking to my family because he was my family now. I let out a little cackle, thinking that he's gotta be joking. And no joke. He picks up our wedding glasses, the ones that I had specifically had made for us, and then throws them directly at me, shattering all around me. Shocked, I didn't know what to do. So I walked over to the broom and started sweeping up the broken glass. You may read this and think surely he would be done throwing a tantrum by now. But no. He then throws pictured frames at me while I'm sweeping up the glass. Honestly, that broken glass on the wood floor was really just a metaphor for any love I had left towards this man. I broke that night. I stopped seeing him as my other half and more as the monster that I'm now stuck with. I became very depressed, and he loved that. He would break me down over and over again just to get a reaction. Two months go by, and one night he completely lost his shit over the washer and dryer people messing up the days they were supposed to come out, and he started pacing back and forth mumbling words that I couldn't quite make out. But he demanded that I call and fix it, then grabbing me and set me on the couch, telling me what to say and that I better not fuck it up. This man was paranoid as fuck, making comments that they were doing it because he was a soldier. Then he started blaming me even though I wasn't even around him when he first called in the first place. But he still yelled at me for hours until snap he walked into the bedroom. Me you ask? I'm on the couch still processing that fucking moment. Our conversation went like this. You're so fucking stupid. 
This is all your fault. Did you plan this all out with the workers just to make me look dumb? Or are you really just that fucking dumb? Huh, you fucking bitch. Yeah, that's what I fucking thought. You fucking no good bitch. You know what? I'm done. You won't do anything except complain and bitch at me, blaming me for everything. All you do is cuss and yell at me for no damn reason. He looked at me with this look that I've heard from other victims try and describe. And the best I can describe it is just a deep darkness in his eyes. Like an emptiness that still causes me nightmares to this day. Without hesitation, he lunges at me in the middle of the day with our curtains open, door wide open, and our neighbors out and about. He throws me against the wall and starts choking me. I slowly see black, but he lets go only for a second because he then slammed my entire body to the floor. At the moment, I'm either blacked out or my brain was trying to shield myself from what the hell was happening. But piece by piece, I would come to, and he was holding me by my shoulders and just repeatedly slammed me on the wooden floor. My screams were ignored by all of the people outside. I pleaded for anyone to call the police and repeatedly yelled for help over and over. My fight or flight takes over, and I chose flight. I run to the main bathroom and then lock the door, frantically calling my mom because in that moment I just wanted to hear her voice. But my poor mom didn't know the nightmare on that phone call until it was way too late. She was with my sister and dad, and she had put me on speakerphone because we usually do this so they can all talk to me like we were all there together. But instead, they hear me screaming for my life, and they hear my ex calling me awful names and telling me to get my ass in there and to unlock the door. They were confused, and my dad was ready to come kill this asshole himself. But then silence. No more banging. Just me softly crying and just trying to call my mother over the phone that I'm alright. And that I know that I need to leave him, but that I had to do it in the safest way possible. Because if he were to catch me, I might not make it out with my life. When I walk out of the room, my ex is just sitting there with a blank stare. Like he had no recollection of his outburst. But that day was the beginning of my escape. It was 2am. Keys to my Pontiac were on the kitchen table and he was asleep in the bedroom that I wasn't allowed in there several days earlier. I busted out of the guest bedroom that was my prison and beelined through the front door quietly, but also as quickly as possible. I then drove nine and a half hours to my home state, only stopping once in Dallas, Texas to fill up on gas. With every mile in my rearview mirror, I felt something inside that reassured me. I'm free now. I'm forever scared, and most of my inner wounds have healed or faded. I 100% believe had I stayed with them, I'd be six feet deep down into the ground. So to my abusive ex-husband that I fled from that late February night, I pray to God that I never ever have to see you again. The story is from when I was 13 and then 16 years old. For a bit of context about me which is relevant to this story, I'm a pansexual female and I've been out of the closet since I was 15. When I was in my teens, I had met a lot of people online. It was during the time of my space and my yearbook and talking with strangers wasn't uncommon. During this time, I had several online accounts on several websites and sometimes would leave one account behind to make a new one sometimes on the same website, sometimes on a different one, for who knows why. On my first My Yearbook account when I was 13, I had made a friend who I'll call Crystal for the purposes of this story. Crystal was very nice, and we had some chats here and again, but nothing serious. When I left my account, I also left behind all the random internet friends who I wasn't close with. Well, fast forward when I was about 16, I don't recall what website I was using, but I once again met Crystal. This wasn't odd as we actually only lived about an hour apart, and some of these sites would show you people who are generally close to your location. Well, we got to chatting and she told me that she had been in love with me and that I had broken her heart when I disappeared. Okay, now I feel like an asshole. I apologize and she seems to accept this. But then she asked me if I remembered what our relationship had been like. Um, relationship? 
we had only chatted every once in a while. We were friendly. So I told her I remembered chatting with her and that I had considered her a friend at the time and that I was really happy to be able to catch up with her. Well, that's when this girl tells me we were a couple. That we were in an actual relationship. Um, what? I asked her if she was being serious and she said she was. That we had dated for nearly three years. That we had apparently talked about getting married and planning a future together. Now, I know that this was absolute bullshit. I had a boyfriend when I was 13 who I stayed with until I was almost 15. And I loved him very much and would have never cheated on him. I actually still loved him when I broke up with him, but his parents didn't want us together. And after six months of keeping us apart, I just decided it would be easier for both of us to end our relationship. Why would I cheat on someone that I cared so much for with a girl that I barely knew? Well, I didn't want to start trouble or argue, so I just told her something along the lines of, Oh, well, I'm sorry. I don't really remember that. And I thought that would be it. Well, I was wrong. She asked me how I felt about her now, and if we could get back together. Now, I don't know if anyone has noticed, but to put it simply, even putting aside the total insanity of her claim, the math just doesn't add up. So look, I met her online three years before these events, but we dated for three years? At the time, I brushed it off, thinking maybe she misunderstood our relationship. Maybe she mistook me for someone else. Anything. So I told her to let me think about it, and we continued chatting normally for about another week with no further insanity. I spoke with Crystal every day for that week, and then she asked me again if we could get back together. I mean, I was single at the time, so for whatever stupid reason, I agreed. Things went well for all of maybe two weeks. In those two weeks, Crystal had sent me a photo of an engagement ring that she had apparently gotten me when we dated before. That was weird, but I already knew this was going to be a short-lived thing, so I didn't worry about it too much and just glossed over this complete lunacy. Well, come to the second weekend after we became a couple and I went to my best friend's house for the weekend. She lived over an hour away from me, so I would go to her house on Friday and get picked up on Sunday afternoon. I did this regularly, and Crystal knew ahead of time that I wouldn't be calling her Friday or Saturday as well as that my texting wouldn't be as frequent. Well, I wasn't seriously invested in this relationship. I mean, I did respect the relationship, and I made sure to be open and honest with her about where I would be, who I would be with, and whatever we were up to. I would text her as I found the time, but I was really focusing on spending time with my friend. Needless to say, none of this set well with her, and I mean it all. Friday night went okay, and Saturday was okay until that evening. By around 8pm, Crystal had texted me and pestered me enough to really get on my nerves, and then she started calling me. She was demanding to know where I was and who I was with even though I had already told her prior. I told her again, and I told her that I really couldn't talk right now, as my friend and I were spending time together. We were at a public park just swinging on a swing set and talking about random stuff and everything that came up, including how Crystal was trying my patience. I then told her that it would be very rude for me to be on the phone, and that I would call her the following evening. She didn't like that. She insisted that I stay on the phone with her. I told her no, and then hung up. I wasn't dealing with her crazy right then and there. She proceeded to call again, and again, and again, over and over, more than 20 times. I finally answered and I asked her what the fuck her deal was. She then accused me of ignoring her all weekend long, as well as some other stuff that I don't really recall. I was done. I then told her. You know what? I'm not doing this anymore. We're over. Goodbye. And then I hung up again. This was before you could block numbers with the simple push of a button, so I just turned my phone off. For the next couple of weeks, she would call, text, email, and message me on various sites begging me to take her back. 
I blocked her where I could and ignored her where I couldn't. She eventually gave up. She's popped up a few times over the years. She'll still message me and ask me how I'm doing. I'm 29 now and happily married to a wonderful man. The last time she popped up was about six years ago. I actually spoke with her a bit. I figured it had been some 10 years or so, and she used to be my friend, so let's just see how this goes. Well, between her having an obsessive girlfriend herself at the time who caused her no end of trouble and her still making every effort to flirt with me, I did not stay in touch. I haven't heard from her since, and if I don't hear from her again for another six, well, that'll be perfectly fine by me. Hey everyone, that's about it for today's stories. If you have your own story that you would like to send, you can send it in at southerncannibal.com or you can email it at southerncannibalstories at gmail.com. I look forward to telling your story. Have a good night or good day, everyone. And remember, to always.